Good morning. I'm here at the Chapin Pass Trailhead off Old Fall River Road, located inside the Rocky Mountain National Park. And then right over here to my right, we've got a big old elk. Oh, and he's walking away. Hey, buddy. And today, I'm going to go for Desolation Peaks, looking at about five miles out with just under a 2,000 foot elevation gain. It's not the elevation gain or the distance that's the problem, it's the terrain. It is atrocious. And I can tell you right now from the start, I'm not going to make it to the summit, so you can't hike fail me. Official start time, 6.20 a.m. Oh, and the elk is back. I had a feeling. I really wish this guy would keep moving along. I've got a really long hike ahead of me and I need to get it started here. He's not moving guys. He is literally just right off the trail and I can't get by yet. Oh, don't go back this way. Don't go back this way. No. All right, guys. Since I can't seem to get by him here on the trail, I'm going to have to audible and go plowing up the side here for a second, go around him because I really do have to get this hike started. I've actually found a little trail out here, so I'm going to follow this. And after a tiny bit of whacking, I'm now rejoining with the main trail. All right, I'm back in business. It is a beautiful day so far. I'm really hoping it stays that way. Got a couple deer down there. And then way out in the distance, is Flat Iron Mountain. And that is a really great view of Marmot Point. And you can barely see Old Fall River Road leading up to the Alpine Visitor Center. That is Sundance Mountain. And just on the other side of it is Trail Ridge Road. This hike was on the list for last summer. It was actually really high on the list. And then the Cameron Peak fire happened and they closed this all down. I just busted through the trees. I'm now making a beeline directly up to the Chapin Chiquita Saddle. This is beautiful. And then coming into view out there, that is flat iron, way out there on the end, and Desolation Peaks. And you can see the three high points in between. And then right here, this one is Chiquita. All right, guys. And in about an hour and five minutes, I'm up here. This is gonna be the Chapin Chiquita Saddle. And this is at an elevation 
of about 12,000 feet. I'm just making my way up the side of Chiquita here. This isn't too bad. Right here at about 12,700, right where this big white rock is, this is where I'm gonna split off and start skirting around Chiquita. Right out there, that's the Desolation Peaks. And this is what you get when you come around Chiquita. It's looking up at Ypsilon. We're about ready to hit the saddle. And then I'm just gonna have to skirt Ypsilon and take it straight on out to Desolation Peaks. That's Ypsilon Mountain. I'm not gonna be going to the top of that today, I don't think. But I'm just under the saddle right now. Took me an hour and 50 minutes to get here. Only took me about 15 to skirt around Chiquita. But I'm gonna keep heading straight for Desolation Peaks. All right. I've done a majority of the elevation gain so far. It's done. This hike is about to start getting rowdy. It's pretty much gonna be rocks the rest of the way. I'm getting a lot closer and it's within reach, but that is still well over a mile out, believe it or not. Looking at about 1.3. That looks like these rocks are thinning out a little bit, which is good. I just went through some pretty nasty stuff, but it wasn't as bad as I remember it being. It's pretty flat and I'm getting there guys. And just so you know, I'm only gonna make it to about right there before I get scared and turn around. I'm dropping it down to the next saddle. And it looks like I got a little bit of up and down and then back up again. This hike is a boot buster and also has a high potential of knee popping. There's so many loose rocks. You step on one, you think it's gonna be solid and it just totally gives out. Well, I can tell you right now, this part is gonna suck on the way back. Oh, yes it is. Made it down to the saddle and this is awesome. Desolation Peaks is looking gnarly. I gotta go up and over this high point to get to them. I'm taking a quick five minute little break Gonna grab a bite to eat, keep the energy going. And I figure this is a good spot. This is absolutely beautiful. I'm not sure what those lakes are down there or if they even have a name. The wind is picking up and the clouds are starting to build. So I'm gonna keep moving. I'm gonna at least get Desolation Peaks today.
I've went up and over that high point, which was pretty cool, but I don't have time to linger. I gotta keep it moving because this hike is really hard on the way back. Got a lot of uphill. I'm having to drop it down one more time. And then the final push uphill. That's gonna be Fairchild sticking up right there in the middle. It's looking huge. And then right down here, there are some crazy white rocks sticking up. And damn, looks like I gotta go up and over another one. Oh my goodness. This is getting real crazy through here. But I think I'm about ready to hit the corner and it should start dying down. But my goodness, this is difficult. All right, I've made it up and over those two high points. Now I just gotta take it on out to the beginning of Desolation Peaks. Woo. All right guys, and I'm getting close now. I'm definitely gonna get this. It's pretty dang windy up here. Wow. All right, guys. All right. Man. And another one. This one is the smallest little hump that I'm having to skirt, but it's still annoying. This is the home stretch right here. guys and in about three hours and 40 minutes I'm up here desolation peaks All right, and this is getting me out of the wind right here. I'm probably not gonna go much further, and that's simply because I can't. I'll fall off and die. 
and this is a view from my spot. If you take it out another 1.1 miles and drop down about 600 feet, you'll run into Flat Iron Mountain. I don't think I'm going to do that today. This was hard enough, and I got a lot to do on the way back. It was supposed to be like over 100 degrees in Fort Collins today, but it's not over 100 degrees up here, I can tell you that. It's chilly. I got my thermal ball on. And here come the clouds. This is looking back in the direction that I have come from. Came over all that nasty stuff on the ridge. And then way out there is Chiquita. The next one over is Ypsilon. And then this is a real nice look at the class three traverse from Ypsilon over to Fairchild. I actually saw a bear up there when I did that. It was crazy. I'm gonna take it up this little bit of the Desolation Peaks right here. However, I'm not gonna be able to go very far. Yeah, I think this is it right here. Sketchy. This just starts getting real sketchy, real quick. This is the end of the road right here for me. This is really sketchy. Making it up these couple rocks right here. It's like straight up. Nope. And that's looking back at the direction that I came from. And you can see I didn't make it very far out onto this ridge. It just starts getting super crazy, super quick. I just happened to be looking over here a few minutes ago and this big giant boulder broke free and like bounced down and just made the most horrific noise. <laughs> Sound like a car crash. Yeah, that was, that tripped me out. I thought it was an animal or something, but no, this big boulder just came bouncing down. I can see Mirror Lake way out in the distance and it looks like it did not get burned for the most part. I don't know, I see some orange trees. They might have got singed. It's about 11 o'clock right now, which means I've been sitting up here on the edge of Desolation Peaks for about an hour. But I can see the clouds starting to build, so it's time to go. It's time to head on back.
super pumped right now, guys. I'm feeling the Rocky Mountain High right now. This is badass. I'm about ready to get into my third GoPro battery, which I've never done before. And that means this is gonna be a super long video. My apologies. Everything is just so awesome up here, I wanna keep recording it. And the GoPro makes it so easy. So easy. I love this camera. It's so smooth, it's like I've got it on a dolly or a gimbal. I'm going to stay low and skirt these things on the way back. There's no point in going back up to the tops. I'm honestly just going to try and make this as easy as possible. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this part right here sucks for about the next 1.7 miles or so. But it's cool. It's a nice day. Clouds aren't that serious. And I got plenty of water. I'm staying way lower this time. I'm just staying below the ridge where it's a little easier here. But I've still got these two big nasty high points in front of me that I'm gonna have to navigate. And then once I do those, then I got to go back up and around Ypsilon. One down, and then one more to go before I get back to Ypsilon. On the way back up and across to Ypsilon, I've been aiming for this big rock right here in front of me the whole time. I passed that on the way down. I'm about halfway around Ypsilon. I'm actually only about four tenths of a mile away from the summit, but it's like 650 vertical feet above me. So I'm just gonna keep skirting it. I've only got one more mountain to go around, Mount Chiquita. I'm floating along here at just under 12.8, and this shouldn't take too long at all. And then I'm going to rejoin with the trail and be home free. And here comes the rain. But what's really blowing my mind is all the people that I see that are still hiking up these mountains. And I have made it back to the trail. This took me about an hour and 50 minutes, 
from Desolation Peaks. And I am really glad I didn't decide to go for a flat iron because I would have got caught up here in the rain for sure. It looks like everything from Twin Sisters up to Long's Peak and around the Continental Divide back to Bear Lake is just getting hammered with rain right now. I'm really glad I didn't decide to hike in that area because look above me right now. Look how it just stops right here. Boy, that felt like it took forever to come down Mount Chiquita, but in reality, it only took like 20 minutes. Whew, all right. This is the last leg of the hike. It's getting dark up there. Oh, I think I timed this perfectly. Here in about 15 or 20 minutes, I'll be back in the trees and I should be safe from lightning and stuff at that point. And that's looking back at what I did today. Wow. And that section in between Ypsilon and Desolation Peaks was by far the worst. That is just atrocious through there. Made it back down to the trees, which makes me feel like I'm not gonna get hit with lightning now. And then right down here at this little creek is the first place that I ever used my water straw. It's the first time it ever saved me because I had hiked all the way out to Flatiron Mountain. And then as I was sitting on the summit, I somehow spilled like 60% of my water and I was freaking out. And I didn't have any water for a good portion of the hike back until I made it back here. I am flying down this thing. I'm gonna get back in under three hours. I should be done with this thing in about 10 or 15 minutes. And the Desolation Peaks are looking pretty far away right now. That takes a lot to get over there. I'm back down to the very first trail split. And I actually missed this on the way up because I had to bypass that elk. But right here, the trail is closed and they don't want you descending down to the creek. It is 1.55 right now, which means that that took me two hours and 55 minutes to get down. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. It took me three hours and 40 to get up. Hope you enjoyed it. Until the next hike, y'all, peace.